news as it used to be. This is Newsnet Evening Edition. This is very much still a search and rescue mission. And there is not a single resource that we will hold off on deploying. The governor of Maryland speaking out tonight amid a massive search for the missing following that catastrophic bridge collapse in Baltimore. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kirk Montgomery. Officials tonight saying six people remain unaccounted for as a massive investigation now begins. New video tonight showing the exact moment an out of control container ship slammed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, sending cars and twisted metal plunging into the icy waters below. The bridge crumbling like a pile of toothpicks in just a matter of seconds. We begin our team coverage tonight with Newsnet's Madison Schlegel. Madison, thank you. The governor of Maryland, Wes Moore, has declared a state of emergency, hoping for help from the federal government. We continue our team coverage now with Newsnet's David Aid reporting from the scene in Baltimore. Over for Newsnet. Now, since 1960, there have been 35 major bridge collapses caused by ships around the world, with just over half happening in the U.S. The World Association for Waterborne Transport Infrastructure put together a list of the most notable bridge versus ship disasters in the U.S. In 2009, a vessel pushing eight barges rammed into the Pops Ferry Bridge in Biloxi, Mississippi, resulting in a 150-foot section of that bridge collapsing into the bay. The most deadly was in 1993, when a towboat pushing barges hit the Big Bayou Railroad Bridge near Mobile, Alabama, causing an Amtrak train to derail, killing 47 people and injuring 103. From 1960 to 2015, a total of 352 have been killed in bridge versus ship collisions. We continue to follow all of the developments both on air and online. Always head to newsnetmedia.com for the very latest. Now, the other big story we're following, the Supreme Court hearing arguments in a new abortion case that could affect women all across the country by possibly limiting access to the so-called abortion pill. Protesters on both sides of the abortion issue gathering outside the Supreme Court today as the justices heard arguments whether the Food and Drug Administration adequately considered safety when it expanded access to the drug Mifepristone used with another drug, Mifepristone is the most common type of abortion nationwide. In 2016, the FDA extended the, wimo, the win window. Women can take the pill from seven to 10 weeks. And during the pandemic, it said an in-person doctor's visit was not needed, allowing mail order pharmacies to ship the drug nationwide. Critics argue those changes compromise women's health. The government argues Mifepristone is safe, and the case is a blatant effort to further restrict abortion. The court is expected to make a decision by early July. If the justices decide to roll back the use of the drug, it could still be used up to seven weeks of pregnancy instead of 10, but it would be harder to get through the mail through telehealth appointments. Now to another mid-air incident, Delta Airlines issuing an apology after an engine panel fell off during takeoff. The incident happened in Salt Lake City on Sunday. This Airbus jetliner was headed for Amsterdam, but only got as far as the Montana-North Dakota boundary before turning back. The plane did land safely. Nobody was hurt. Officials say a pylon panel behind the engine of the left wing detached on takeoff. Pylons are structures used to attach engines to the wing. It was not clear how pilots became aware of the missing panel. This incident is the third time in three months that a panel has come off a U.S. jetliner. The FAA in launching an investigation into the cause. Donald Trump is now under a gag order ahead of his hush money criminal trial. A New York judge barring Trump from making public statements about witnesses, prosecutors, court staff and jurors, citing the former president's previous history of making inflammatory remarks of, about people involved in his legal cases. Trump has been placed under similar gag orders in the past and he's been fined at least once for violating them. Trump's legal team is yet to comment on this recent order. Trump's hush money trial is set to begin on April 15th. 
to Wall Street now. All the major averages rose in the session on Tuesday. The averages are on pace for their fifth consecutive winning month, attempting to recover after back-to-back -back losses. And in other business news, a decades-long legal battle between MasterCard, Visa, and merchants coming to an end. With more is J.D. Durkin. Lottery fever has reached the boiling point after there were no winners last night. The Mega Millions jackpot for tonight is the country's eighth largest lottery prize ever coming in at 1.13 billion with a B. It was last won on December 8th. And the Powerball jackpot for Wednesday night is also clinging to an estimated 865 million, the fifth largest prize of that game. Well, the old saying goes, you can't win if you don't play. Remember, the odds of winning the grand prize jackpot are about one in 303 million per ticket. Good luck. Still ahead, the Newsnet weather team tracking the potential for severe weather in parts of the country. We have sports highlights as well as entertainment headlines. I'm Kirk Montgomery. Thank you for watching Newsnet. We'll be back in 60 seconds.